Hmm. Okay. <sighs> well, it's been a couple hours. Um, we've progressed um, into the next season. Um, and seven days passed. I was planning on changing and taking a new video pretty much every time we did a season change. But... Um, yeah, lots of stuff to talk about. Um, as you can see with this uh, layer zero here has uh, uh, progressed well. We've increased our um, capacity. We're, we're just starting to introduce metal processing up here, um, but that's kind of in the back burner. Um, so we don't have any metal stockpile, no ore. Um, we've got cloth. Processing right here, um, starting from cotton, of course. Um, here's where I actually I almost got a good portion of my village uh, killed, and I ended up restoring from a save because I basically only had like two guys left. Um, and what happened was is that you start out with ten bandages, and basically a bandage can heal a wound. It's really simple. Um, be that a bleeding wound or a, a blunt force trauma wound. Um, and each one of these gnomes has a hitbox for its every hand, arm, uh, head, torso, stomach, chest, or sorry, stomach, uh, legs, and feet. So potentially a lot of different, um, actually I think the stomach is, is just the torso. Um, but yeah, lots of, lots of hitboxes, lots of areas that wounds can be generated at. Well, I had my, uh, I saw a goblin, um, wandering around, just as happenstance, and so I sent everybody to attack him. Because the goblin at this point, at this current point in time in the game, wasn't armed or armored not really a threat. I didn't know that my other small various combats beforehand had, with the with the golems, reduced my bandage stock to zero. Well, just on the other side of a little hill from this goblin was a honey badger. And because all my guys were all in still in like combat mode, essentially, or like focus, they just, after they killed the goblin, they went and attacked the honey badger. And the honey badger slashed the bejesus out of everyone um, and gave them all bleeding wounds. And if you don't have a bandage, it doesn't matter how big or small the bleeding wound is, it won't stop bleeding. So, yeah. My bad, haven't played this game in a while. I kind of skipped over the whole cloth processing part, and I was just letting the cotton just build up and build up and build up, and then it turns out, well, um, yeah, you need to process those into looms of, uh, or through the looms to uh, turn into bolts of cloth, and then the bolts of cloth you can then make into bandages. bandages. So, I reset, did that, I have 38 bandages, and I turned on the little tracker up on the top left of the screen and added another line to put bandages on there to show showed just how many bandages I've got on there um, so that I can always keep a monitor of how many I've got. Uh, since I don't have any armor right now yet, that's very important. Um, I have the, the butcher stalls set up right over here and the bone carver. Um, bone carver is useless and very important. It's incredibly important because of the bone needle right here. You cannot make a tailor shop, which turns your bolts of cloth into bandages, without a bone needle. You just can't. There's nowhere to buy one. You have to make one. So typically, earlier on in the game, maybe like last, last season, I would have killed off one of the extra yaks that I had for the bones, but I forgot about it. For some reason, it just didn't didn't hit close to home, so it's like, okay, well, fine. So now, everything's okay, but on the downside, goblins have found us. 
So they'll start raiding us fairly regularly in, in ever increasing um, strengths. Now, this giant green section that's in front of us right here, this is the Grand Hall. Um, remember when I said that gnomes are attracted by, let's just go ahead and hit, the, hit this on the slowest level, um, are attracted by your general worth, your total worth. Well, that total worth is judged by everything that you you guys produce, everything that you have in a stockpile, all pieces of furniture in everybody's rooms, all the workshops that you have. It doesn't matter how many seeds you have, it doesn't matter how many livestock you have, I think. Um, it's all just in produced things. There's a lot of other variables that, that is just a really simplistic way of explaining it. Well, the Great Hall is like the thing that your kingdom will be famous for. And so thusly, everything that you put into it say, is multiplied by, it's either double or by 10. I'll, I'll have to do the, look into the math on it exactly, but I think it's just double. Yeah. Um, so, for example, right there in the center, we've got these um, tables. And there, there, there's some tasks of tables to be built, and then there's some chairs and tables that are already put there. That, let's see, as an example, that table is worth 23. Well, that adds a value of 46 to the room. So the room itself is worth 1200 $1, uh, There's a value, 1200 worth at the moment. Um, and that's also because I've got some of these, uh, some of these statues up here, um, up and to the right. And there is a monitor lizard. Do we want to attack him? No, they're pretty sharp too. Um, so these statues individually are worth 150, just depending on who crafted them and how good they are. They could be worth more, they could be worth less. Yeah, this is 100. Um, but they each add double their value to the room. So one tactic of getting, I need more workers, period, hands down. We, I'm starting to outpace my, I have more tasks coming down and more needs being created than I have people to work on it. So therefore, I'm creating myself a bottleneck in just the hands that can do the work. So, consequence, I need to start filling up all of this area back here with statues. I mean, statues are cheap to make out of stone that we can just mine right out of the ground. So, just need to, uh, just need to make more. Okay, um, I'm not getting the blocks that I need to to this stonemason, so I'm raising this stonemason up in the priority scale so that the blocks will start to go to this workshop instead of the statue building workshop. I know we were just talking about statues, but I need these tables to get done first. It's just the way it is. Now, all of these 
create statue jobs won't get done like before the season change but I'm just throwing them in there so that they can be worked on while everything else is being created so kind of one of those back burner things again things I need more workers for Alrighty then, let's go ahead and turn this back on. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about was, um, oh yeah, we've gone down one. I opened up a huge room in here with these different stockpiles that basically I'm overproducing organizational space because I know that I'll need it later on uh, just through experience. So. Everything is down here for the moment. And it's just a really easy, protected area to place all the things that I need and to keep them off of the floor and keep them from creating golems. Just spontaneously. Um, here very shortly, however, I need to start going downhill. Um, stairs down. I mean, we could kind of explore these under areas more if we really wanted to. It's not, um, and we will come back to them. But for the most part, when starting to try and find uh, metals, which you're gonna be looking at copper and malchalite and some of those uh, early starting metals, tin, um, they're gonna be higher up. I'm not gonna, your odds for finding them and getting them is gonna be better at level 10, basically. Uh, level 10 or below. So, we're going to go ahead and start off here at 12, and uh, let's see, I think we're going to do 15 by 15 blocks. So, do, 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 do. Um, this is in an, uh, a sometimes futile effort to keep um, golems from just auto spawning. Um, they will, anyways, because of some interesting quirks in the in the concept of the three D uh, game that this is. Um, when I say 3D, I don't mean like Oculus Rift 3D. I mean as in it's it it works in three dimensions. Like, um, say for an example that the ooh I've got a chasm right there. Fantastic! I can show you that. Um, all right, let's find the edge of that chasm. It's right there. Okay. Um, and so that's the edge. Those red squares are empty squares. So right here because you don't want to open up a chasm just randomly without having some sort of idea of as to what's down there because chasms can contain some very bad baddies um, stuff that I'm really not prepared oh yes the, the monitor lizard we know You are gonna go. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we know. Anyways, uh, yeah, stuff that I'm not prepared to fight uh, current at this current point in time. Uh, in, in any way, really. Oh. Gems and ore. Huh? Get down here. Get us some of that. Sometimes the digging pathing on these doors, or on these uh, 
Stairwells is not great. Uh, I don't think they ever really fixed that. Um, so occasionally you'll get a guy that like is tasked with digging a stairwell down and he just does it like he's just acts like he's confused and lost because something about the pathing is just wrong so you just have to cancel it out and then like dig it on a different tile it's not it's just inconvenient especially when you're doing like a run of like 20 levels or something like that it's it, it's a kind of a pain so then they'll just stop and you're, you're wondering later on like why isn't my guy down here yet and he's like oh because he's being fucking stupid okay gotcha um so and i think that's what's basically happening with our guy here yep okay um you can notice it because there's this green means that it's a job that's been selected okay that's cool but up here i bet you that's my miner yeah that's see his status of digging stairs down but yet he's just stuck in this area. Yeah, it's, yeah, bad path. So you just kind of, job cancel. They took cancel out of the main category and that bothers me. So just do that, but he'll, he'll go eat or something and get refreshed and figure shit out with his life. And, and be back to normal. Um, anyways, I was talking about that three-dimensional thing. Like, say I, I, say it takes, as an example, 300 pieces of, of stone all touching each other to generate a golem in a, we'll say, in a roughly uh, round pattern. Well, it's not going to be a perfectly round pattern because, uh, first off, we're dealing with squares. Second off, the, that 300 pieces also counts with the things that are above them. So like say I under, un, uncovered 150 squares, a uh, 10 by 15 square, and then went to the area below it, uh, the level below it, and opened up a 10 by 15 right there and just left all the stone on the ground. In that case, a golem would be like, well, there's 300 pieces all touching together because they're right on top of each other. and. Um, there's no such thing as vertical distance in this game. Well, I mean, there's... That's not entirely true. There's falling damage. But there's no vertical distance insofar as, like, counting um, objects on floors. So, it's, uh... Yeah. It can be kind of nerve-wracking when you think you're safe and then you send down one of your newbie miners and then he gets fucking toasted by a granite golem that you didn't even know was there. Now, later on, when your guys are equipped with great weapons and great armor, it's not going to matter if they run into a granite golem. They're going to be able to beat it down, you know, without the need of a whole lot of assistance. But earlier, early on in the game, yeah, you're going to need a hand. Um, a good friend of mine um, suggested I try uh, Terraria, and I've seen it. I've seen it for sale on Steam, and I've heard about it from time to time, but I've never actually personally played it. So I might give that a shot here once I uh, run this colony into the ground or whatever ends up happening um, with these guys. Um, 
you know, I'm not going to play like every minute of it. That would be like a, a live stream, which I haven't really set up yet. I've got a Twitch account and I watch people on Twitch, so my favorite entertainers are on Twitch, but I don't personally uh, stream as of yet. I think I tried to a while back and I just couldn't get the, the codex to work correctly, but I don't know, maybe it'll work, man. I don't think there's anybody to, to watch it, though, so. What I do like is those annoying little sounds, uh, like them digging and mining and stuff, which get really annoying, like late game. They go away with distance, so all I have to do is just not have them on screen. <laughs> so that's a yay. I guess technically I could just turn off the sounds, but I like sounds. But it sounded intelligent, didn't it? Jesus. Ugh. I like sounds. Oh yes, one must always build tor torches, by the way. Always build torches. Um, things like skeletons and zombies used to populate wherever there was dark. I don't know if that still holds true, but it was quite a pain. Now, now that we've dug most of this, um, we can kind of... Look, there's more gems. Gems are really important, so always take the time out to, that you need to mine the gems. I can't fucking see these, this damn obsidian. It's hard to tell if there's an ore in any of this. Damn. I'm just gonna have to put fucking torches on every dang level. Damn. Alright. I've, I've, I think, gosh, maybe in my very first village, um, freaking, I outcut all my trees and wound up that I basically just 
carpentered myself out of any foliage and I didn't have the, the clippings and at the time the merchants you couldn't buy clippings on the merchants like you can now so it was really a pain really a pain Cutting back a lot of trees for carpentry needs, I always make sure that I am clipping them before I cut them. So at least, at the very least, I can do a one for one swap. Simple as that. really long, intricate veins, so it should be kind of neat to see. Is there some other stuff over there? No, nothing I can tell. Um, that looks like tin. Tin? Tin? Tin. Cool. So, we're starting to find, yeah, there's some sapphires. We're starting to find some tin, some copper, which is good. Hmm. My favorite is when there's uh, your starting colony is, is on uh, uh, lapis lazuli, which is the type of sun that's just just bright blue. Looks amazing. Unfortunately, this is not. Not our luck this time around. So with these dark background stones, it's hard to tell exactly what what there is. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything else I need to do right now other than just kind of like let it run. Um, this is one of those, definitely one of those things that you just kind of set up the, uh, oops, 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 uh, that you just kind of set up all of the right things, all the dominoes in the right order, and then you just push and let go because you don't have any sort of direct control um, so If you're just gonna make leather armor and nothing else, you still have to have it. Or I'm sorry, metal armor and nothing else, you still have to have a leather worker because it's gotta they have to make the straps.
actually. The winter is going to be coming next, so you can't grow anything in the winter. So I want to definitely get all of my crops into the ground first. I need more farmers. I need like five more farmers. <clears throat> Really, I'm just going to convert almost everyone to a farmer for now, except for the miners, and now I need them to make my stuff. So gonna have like three or four more farmers at least because I want to get everything in the ground before winter because nothing grows while it's winter but you wanted to have it in the ground and done by spring and so like so as soon as spring hits the game mechanic will tip over and it'll start to grow again that's what I mean so I need everything picked and harvested and then new seeds put in the ground so that all winter we can just concentrate on getting I'm gonna have oh crap that's that's the wrong way to think about that I'm gonna have all winter to freaking do that <sighs> But I need those stone blocks done. Ended up just moving all my woodcutters over into builders so that they'll be able to down five gonna put these guys back up up four ah another worker's perfect craft the strap craft two ten so essentially it will always keep 10 on hand. Craft two. 10. So when there when the global inventory gets reaches 10, it won't queue up anymore. Oh, that's another thing about a great hall is that your guys will go there to eat just like they would for a real great hall. So it's kind of the, the point of having one. Oh, that's why. 
Oh, I sent them in descending order because I was being all spiffy, wasn't I? Yeah. Okay. Well, we're not going to do that anymore. So I've got two days left. See where our mining guys are at. Ten or ten, unless that's silver. Nope, it's ten. Let's go. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm gonna tell you. Kind of real, see if that curves around or if that's just part of the whole deal. More sapphires, can need them. Okay, I'm just working away. Now, what's your, what's your skill up to? They get up in, into like hundreds of mining skill and they're just like mm. it's like a chainsaw it's really cool and you could burrow down to a point where there's a baddie and just lose your entire level up mining team and there's like jack and shit that you can do about it it's pretty frustrating is not right. Okay, stone carver. These take stone carving, and I don't think builders have stone carving. That's why. Isn't that the truth? Population sign. Profession. Now, this is one of those super just for this sake, hyper specialized professions. And it's only going to have masonry and stone carving. Okay, so go over here to my miners who are happy mining away, and I need them to continue to be mining away, but right at the moment, they're both going to be stone carvers, so they're both going to jump over here and, and start trying to knock out these uh, these statues. I've got 
day and three quarters left to get some more value into that great hall so that I can grab some more workers for the winter. Uh, if I hadn't screwed up a couple of my placements and some of my timing, I wouldn't be scrambling. Or if I'd gotten gnomes last season turn when I went, it was going into fall, but I didn't even have a great haul. It, it turned to fall and I was like, um, I'm supposed to have a lot more people than, damn it. So, yeah, no, nope, it's all on me. I screwed that one up. So, let's see if we can hopefully knock this shit out. Um, with these production workshops, I'll set, say if I have three of them, I'll have one to set to craft 230, one to craft 250, and then one to craft 280. So, as an example, when you have only 10 blocks in, the, in your inventory, all three shops are running. But once you hit 30, that one in the end drops off. So you only have two people obsessed with creating more stone blocks. And then once you hit 50, that drops off. And then you only have that one psycho that's like, oh, we must have 80, and goes all the way up. That way, you're... If you put, like, all three... There, there's two concepts of doing it. If you put all three workshops to set at 80 to craft 280 in the in the global inventory, then you would have you would be using up those three guys 100% all the way to 80. But the way that I have it sit staged with need that as soon as you hit 30, you get an extra manpower back in the pool. And as soon as you hit 50, you get an extra manpower back in the pool. And so my way takes a little bit longer than just doing all three shops to 50 or all sh three shops to 80. But I, I see that this produces better results long term. Um, there's even when you drop back under that 80 profile, you don't have three guys cutting out of your other tasks and running back over to here to, to create you know one block per workshop. You got one guy going back. Okay, that's reasonable. So for me, uh, it's a, kind of a tried and tested method, so. Um, a serpentine golem has been spotted, God. Damn, you serpentine golem. Attack all squads. Now, this isn't my first time go with any of this. These guys should know what they're doing by this point. They've killed, you know, a couple things. Still don't have any armor, but that's fine. Armor doesn't really protect too well against blunt force trauma, which is all the golems have, you know, so. Um. Good. Good, good, good. And we'll see here in a few seconds if our bandage number drops. Yep, yep, went from 38 to 36. So essentially there were two injuries. I'm glad that we got that caught up. Yep, none of that's gonna get worked on for now because we to just focus on these damn statues. So we're already up to 3,800. It's better. It's about 5 p.m. on the 11th day of fall, so. Oh yeah, there's a merchant in town, so we'll take a look at that. See if we can sell off some of the excess dirt and excess uh, serpentine rock that's just generating these golems against us. Um, it's easier to sell it off than it is to clean it up a lot of times, so unless you need a big stockpile for some reason, it's best to just sell it off in batch in bulk. So...
<laughs> I love how they go and bring their food and sit down at the table. It's just so kind of... Cute, I guess? I don't know. They're, they're just tiny. Um, for the first... I think the first year I played this back when it was in the pre-alpha stage, it... I never like put that sort of furniture like tables and chairs in my great hall I was like no screw it I'm just gonna put the high dollar value stuff in there and so I didn't know that there was this adorable little mechanic of them and you can make like different cafeterias and you'll see like later on when I've got my guys you know halfway to the center of the earth I'll create little dormitories and cafeterias for them to go and eat in so that they don't have to come all the way back up to the surface and waste waste time essentially like that a uh, serial number. I don't know what this is to. Nope, it's not for my tablet. Alright then, you get the on my desk. Yeah. Okay. See if that gnome wakes up. I'll, uh, try and there. Let me guess. That's out, right? Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, the fifty, uh, the seventy, and we'll go with this one. Craft to one hundred. The biggest thing I think in the in the uh, winter is most of the time I have my uh, farmers doing um, their cooking and uh, cloth work uh, until up until the time that I can get enough population to do have dedicated tailors now the farmers just end up kind of being uh, kind of being a jack of all trades or not all trades but most trades another irritating thing okay so I'm dealing with essentially at the moment two different types of stone basalt and uh, the serpentine say I've got two blocks of serpentine and two blocks of basalt I can't combine them into a statue I've got to have four per statue of the same type so when I'm just randomly creating stone values and I look at the I look at the stone carver and it says oh well, I've got four blocks right here it says four blocks and I'm like oh well fuck what's what's wrong well I didn't look deep enough into it and say oh well I've got three of one and one of the other well okay that's why that guy is, is idle so yeah fun stuff let's uh, clean this floor we don't really have um, a maid yet and don't have the population to have a dedicated uh, cleaner for, that's for damn sure but uh It'll, it'll happen. It'll happen. Okay, we're, we're saving. We're right about to go into the uh, season change. We'll see, uh, yeah, first day of winter. And uh, we'll see if we get any uh, extra little nomies. God, we do. Ah, doubled our worth. Yes. All right, we got five. Uh, 
Uh, all right. So that's good. got two that are already carpenters, but I don't honestly need carpenters. I need freaking... Farmers is what I need. So, we'll just start the top. Power. Ayer? Power. Not gonna be a miner. Not gonna be a blacksmith. Might be a rancher. God, that's a lot of eights. It's a lot of below tens. Farmer, farmer, farmer. Yeah. You, good sir, you're going to be a farmer. So we're gonna be a carpenter because we don't need. I've got three. God help me, I don't typically ever even need three. I need two at most. <sighs> you are gonna be a blacksmith. Is armor craft armor crafting and weapons crafting are probably the most two most difficult skills to train up and most important. So for the moment, you are farm black. Zazzles is the Grizz. Wow. All right. Smelting, blacksmithing, metalworking, weapons crafting is a ten. Iron crafting is an eight. I'm not gonna deal with you. Crossfitting, tinkering, machining. I need to start this winter. I have to start doing that somehow. Uh, mechanic, animal husbandry, butchery, horticulture, farming, cooking, brewing, medical, caretaking. I need to designate a doctor also. You're just going to be a straight up farmer. Sorry, dude. I have to delete some of your name. Okay, Balco. Hmm. A really good rancher. Um, let's see what the other guy is. Skills. Farming, cooking, brewing, medic, caretaking. Ugh. Oh, it doesn't even matter, you're gonna be another blacksmith. So, Belco, you're going to be skills. You're gonna be, sorry to say, another rancher. Flush with ranchers. I 
didn't get any miners. This really happened for one. Usually I have three or four by this time. Alright, next big thing that I gotta do with immigration. Freaking military first. Military squads. Drop down to the bottom squad. You should have a couple vacancies. Yes. Farmer. Right drinkers. Okay, I like that one. That reminds me of whiskey. See, one of the reasons that you make personal quarters, and I haven't really explained this beforehand, is that if the gnomes get a lot of rest and they're happy with how much their room is valued at, which is by what you put in it, they will be required to sleep less. So they will produce more faster and work for longer. Thus, it behooves you to make sure that your gnomes are well taken care of. Like, very soon I'll be replacing all these crappy straw beds with, like, four-poster canopy beds. And it's going to be uh, really quite nice. Is bored. Oh, good. I am about to die. All right. Now that we're not on the time crunch of getting these freaking uh, <clears throat> statues up, because it doesn't really matter anymore. Um, you guys can go back to mining. These are farmers, the rest of these are builders. Okay, blacksmith. Um, I guess we can. Uh, is that smelter? Did I just. Oh no. I didn't mean to. Well, actually, maybe we're going to need smelters later on. Smelter is basically like your recycling. It's that simple. Uh, mechanism workshop. Metal. I need. What is that? Furnace? I think it's the furnace. 
Furnace is what converts logs into coal, which is very important later because you can't dig up enough coal to generate everything that you need to have a metal industry. So it must be forge. The, the ore into the bar and uh, you just go to repeat and goes for uh, two to one so two ores make a bar so every two walls that you knock down that have ore in them make one bar and that one bar won't get you very far but just right like in real life most metal deposits are uh, large and tend to gravitate to areas so it's not just like onesies and twosies here and there it doesn't work like that Builders who would normally be smelters, I'm going to take that off just for the moment so that I can get my blacksmith up and running. Um, yeah, okay. I should be able to just sit back and just do things. Uh, build furniture. Torch. Yay, torch. Uh, boop. And boop. 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 Oh, there's more to mine in here. Oh. More to mine in here, too. Okay. Those will be important later. Oop, there's Master Light right down there. Damn. Green hiding in the green. Later on, I'll end up scrapping like most of these freaking uh, statues and replacing them with metal statues because they're worth like a thousand times more. But you know, you have to put your head. So, all right, that's about it. I think uh, we're done videotaping for the day. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to go through like a couple of years with the uh, game time and then we'll just see where we're at and uh, yeah, it just really depends on, depends on what it feel like. All right. I'll, uh, I'll see what that was. Over here. Cheers.